Hello everyone. So it's been a while since we had a trialing update and I've recorded this like three different times because uh, I never really quite got it right. So hopefully the third time's a charm here. So about five years ago, I set out to learn more about programming in a way that was more interesting to me. So I decided to look into game development. Uh, I was 19 at the time and I didn't really know much about it except for just, you know, basic like CS 101 courses. And I thought it'd be a good way to just get my foot in the door. And naturally, if I'm making a game, I would want to make a game that I'd want to play, which means that I wanted to make a multiplayer action card game thing that eventually became Triwing. And throughout this whole thing, I took it all as a learning experience. And, you know, a lot of people were telling me initially that, like, you couldn't do it. You couldn't make a multiplayer game, especially as your first go around. Uh, all of these systems that you wanted were just like not feasible and all these other things that kind of sparked my interest even further because I kind of wanted to just prove all these naysayers wrong and just say like, look, dude, I can do this. It's not that hard as it looks. And somewhere throughout that learning experience, I kind of took it a little too far. And I think uh, drawing wasn't supposed to get as far as it got, <laughs> as weird as that sounds. And I think uh, after... After working on uh, this project for, you know, five years and after kind of changes in my life experience, I think it's about time that I finally just take a, an indefinite hiatus from Triwing. And today I wanted to talk about the, the implications that game has had, where it's going to go from here, and then uh, finally what this means for, for me and for you. So uh, I guess... We should probably start off by saying that, again, when I started this, I was 19 and my priorities uh, were a little different back then, right? Like I was playing video games for money and, you know, Twitch and video games are pretty much all that ever really concerned me. And now I'm 25 and my responsibilities have changed. I'm married. I've got my own place and I've got kids living with me. So it's a little different. Um, but one thing that really kept me from moving forward with trialing actually wasn't really any of this it was just the fact that i got tired of looking at my code base and just staring at all my mistakes and either wanting to fix them and just not having the time to fix them and it's just it, it's this weird like circular argument that just kept on going because when i made this i didn't really have any coding experience i just kind of did things and i followed tutorials and i stuffed my head into books trying to make sense of various bits of documentation. And that worked to an extent, but one problem with doing, well, multiple problems with doing that is that you don't really understand why you're doing things. And a lot of a lot of tutorials, especially, really just try to give you a stopgap answer for like a one-time thing. Like, hey, this is this, you know, this is my YouTube uh, Unity tutorial about this one thing. And then it, they teach you that one thing, but it doesn't really help with scalability. So when the project eventually grew, uh, my code didn't adjust accordingly. And that caused a lot of issues. And, you know, now that I actually work as a software developer and have had the years of experience in um, the real life development world of like, of agile and of just watching different management uh, kind of handle developers, I've kind of learned the do's and don'ts of of the industry, well, of the software development industry specifically. And the problem now that I face is that when I look back at my project and I go into it, I am greeted with a mess of code that I don't have time to fix and I don't really wants to invest said time fixing because then I kind of just rehash the same stuff and it's not really fulfilling and I can't really add on new things because all of my stuff is tied to the back end of my my spaghetti code that I made when I was 19 and for really for the lack of uh, for, for lack of better explanation I just don't want to be that guy that just spends an eternity working on just one thing because the weird part about game development is that you are just as much of a of a creative as you are a software developer and you know you're creating an experience and game development's weird because it matches all of these strange uh fields and concepts together right like as 
partially development, it's partially art, it's sound design, it's entertainment, it's business, it's marketing, it's all of these things together. And I'm the only person working on this by the end of the day. And it's kind of taxing. Uh, and the last thing I want is just to be that guy that just does tri-wing. Because I am like an artist. And I, when I explain that I do game development to people, they always ask, what's it like? And <laughs> I always tell them the same thing. And it's like, it's kind of like being a starving artist. Or it's kind of like being, uh, it's kind of like being like a rapper on SoundCloud, right? Like everybody has all these projects. And it's just not lucrative or feasible to think that you're going to hit it big. But Ultimately, you do it because you love it, and you do it because you want to see something different. And I just, I don't want to be that guy that just does the same thing forever. But that's not to say that I don't love it, because I do I do love this project. It's, it's been five years, and it's my baby. Um, but I just, I just want to try something else, and I want to take all of my mistakes that I've learned and then apply it to something so that I can do better in the future. And... I guess on the topic of mistakes, I do kind of want to just talk about some of the things that really held me back, aside from just my general lack of knowledge moving into things, um, when working on Triwing and really just working on games in general, and maybe that's something that somebody out there can learn from, if not myself. And aside from my spaghetti code and really not understanding like the, the fundamentals of object-oriented programming while starting development, and really, I... I if for whatever reason there is some aspiring game developer who watches this video for whatever reason and you don't know anything about programming, I would heavily implore you to, while you're doing your game development things, to really just like read actual code documentation and manuals and instructions and take classes if you can because 95% of tutorials out there, especially on like YouTube, will not teach you proper etiquette when programming and it will come back to haunt you and i promise you that but uh aside from that the two other big issues that i had when working on this were networking and marketing and those are two things that i really want to uh hone in on on this next idea that i have but the first one when it comes to networking was rough because everybody always says like did not make a multiplayer game and that part in its own is like a giant middle finger to me because I hate being told things I can't do and I think a lot of people are like that right like you're told something that you're not supposed to be able to do and then you want to go out and do it and then you know <laughs> shenanigans ensue and one of the one of the things about working on this project and working with unity specifically is that unity didn't really have a good networking backend and it required some kind of third party plugin or some sort uh, and having to switch different providers would cause issues with the game because you would basically just have to redo everything over again. And you've maybe heard that like when people create a multiplayer game, they choose whether or not they want something to be multiplayer, specifically online multiplayer, from the get-go because it structures the framework of how you develop the game. And that's very true. And one of the issues that I ran into was that originally I used Unity's built-in networking system, which eventually just kicked the bucket and they just said, forget it, which left me in the dark. And then I tried to use another third-party networking solution, which I ultimately didn't like, but then that required me reprogramming the game again. And then when I finally found one I liked, I realized that I was very dependent on them keeping things up to date and running and compatible uh, with multiple systems. And it just, it wasn't a healthy relationship, if you will. Because every single time something went wrong, that required me spending months upon months, if not years, trying to fix uh, something that really should have been working from the very beginning. And when thinking about stuff like networking, there are various concepts that I was just too, for the lack of a better term, incompetent at the time to fully implement. And it kind of hindered the development of my game, right? Like I wasn't able to do uh, user accounts, which is very important. Uh, I wasn't able to have a, a reliable enough networking system. Uh, so like matches, when they worked, they worked, but when they didn't, they really kind of suffered. Uh, matchmaking lobbies were always a point of contention, which is really funny to me now, looking back at it. But these are things that are critical to a networking game, to a networked multiplayer game, really, that you should always have. And I wasn't able to really fulfill that, that kind of promise. And that really just kind of like stunted the growth and really killed off my motivation plenty of times when working on this project. And the other thing too was marketing and communication, which are two things that like, as a person, I'm not really great at, <laughs> to be honest. 
Uh, so that's something that really just kind of like stunted the growth of my game, both with uh, marketing. Because when it comes to like uh, sales and games, the market and gamers in general are very fickle and you really only get one shot. And there was a GDC talk that I watched about that that really illustrated that point. And I don't remember the, what the name of it was, but the short and sweet was that you basically get two really big chances to tell your audiences what you're doing and to sell your product. And if you blow those two, you're probably never going to have another shot. And, you know, some games do, but generally speaking, you don't. And I blew both of those <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. And the other part is the communication. And that's really more of like me keeping up with my promises and keeping in contact with like the players and all these other things that like I'm just not very good at, just straight up. And thankfully, when uh, the, the things I can learn from like all of these mistakes, right, is that Triwing has taught me uh, and really my work experience has taught me that like in order to do these, you need to have a little bit of patience and you have to come into it with a certain... Uh, mindset, at least for the type of games and projects that I want to make. Of course, like any anybody can go in and make like a platform or somewhat whatever. But uh, when I do this next project, I want to make sure that my networking is completely uh, sound and built and established before I even get to like an announcement. We're gonna uh, not we. I'm using the agile system already when looking at things like when to push out certain builds and when the time is eventually right to announce. Uh, the, the name and the concept and the, the images and trailers of my next project that, you know, everything will be at a playable state. Everything will be uh, basically ready to ship and the trailers, not the trailers, the pre-release builds and everything that I do eventually hand out for alpha and beta testing will be uh, older builds while I work on other stable um, versions of that in the future. You know, just, just things that like ultimately I really should have done. And the nice thing is as well is that I have a friend who is joining me for this project, someone who's very passionate about the type of thing that I want when I explain the concept to all my friends. Um, and it just, it's nice to have somebody, well, first off, he is, it's nice to have somebody there anyway, who just kind of bounce ideas back and forth. But he's also going to be like the designated community and marketing guy. And he's great at that he just has like a natural presence for it whereas i don't so it's a really good compliment back and forth and he's also helping with things like balancing and like character design and stuff like that which is great but really this this whole experience has just kind of taught me that it's it's a learning process it's not something that i'm really gonna ever perfect but it's part of this like weird never-ending journey to just kind of create the best possible thing i can create and the moment I knew it was time to kind of put driving down was when I started looking into creating this prototype for the other project and having this clean slate, kind of like an artist, where I don't know if anyone out there has like drawn anything before, but or like if you ever like wrote a paper, the hardest part is always starting, right? Just staring at that empty page and just wondering like, what am I going to create? What am I going to build? But once you get going, you kind of know whether or not it's the right thing to do. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where I felt, where I opened up a new, I, op I created a new project and I stared at it for a while. I started typing and once I got going, everything made sense. Everything was a lot smoother than trialing ever was. And it was at that point I realized that this game is currently holding me back and I could be doing more. And as much as it kills me, because any creative knows that like killing your babies is not fun. But as much as it killed me to do it, you just have to do it sometimes if you want to grow as a person, as a creative. So that's kind of where I am. Um, this decision, believe me, this decision sucks for me more than it sucks for anyone else. But I hope that I can learn from it and everyone is understanding and supportive of the decision I've decided to make. Uh, the drama community has been great. You guys have all been very supportive of of me and tolerating with my nonsense. So I can't thank you all enough for being there throughout this whole thing. Um, if you guys are interested in like me as a person, I am probably going to be on Twitch every now and again, just playing games from time to time, or uh, I'll be on Discord as well. And the next time you guys do see me when I announce a project, uh, I hope you guys will be there and I hope you actually do like the type of thing that we're making. I understand that it's not going to be for everyone who is a Battle Network fan, but... Um, 
yeah, I think that's a, I think that's everything. I promise that the next time I do this, I'll be coming full steam, 100% ready. And uh, I've taken a really heavy note and a really big look at all the mistakes that I've made. So next time around, I think I'll be a lot more prepared. So thank you all for listening, and uh, I'll definitely see you in the next one. Peace.